I'm making this video because I have a number of people who work with me out of the Philippines, uh, virtual assistants, and I've noticed some consistent challenges over the years. And I thought, you know, if I was making mistakes over and over, um, I would certainly hope that someone would point it out to me or tell me what's expected of me, especially since we're dealing with a different culture. So first, a bit about your typical American client. And this is directed to Filipino virtual assistants who want to do a better job, who want to excel, who want raises, who want to be kept busy, et cetera. Your typical American customer is probably a small business owner, an entrepreneur. And this person probably works 80, 90, 100, 110 hours a week and has been for a year or two. Maybe has taken one little vacation but really works hard. And the reason they do that is because they, we, believe that in order to get ahead in life, it takes a lot of hard work. You can't just go do what the stupid government says and work 40 hours and blah, blah, blah. Most entrepreneurs don't care if you have a bachelor's degree. They care that you produce value for them. And since we work so hard and we try to produce so much value, we want, we expect our staff to do the same. Now, in the United States, and I'm sure in the Philippines, there are a lot of people who are, it's a common term in the United States called woke. And these are younger people who think that um, the world owes them uh, a nice work-life balance. And I like to only work 40 hours because I like to spend time with my family and relaxing and rejuvenating. And I don't want to work myself to death. And that kind of attitude is a real turnoff to most American entrepreneurs. The, that it's okay if you feel that way, but you're probably not a good employee if you feel that way, or you're acceptable, but you're not great. If you really want to excel with an American entrepreneur, work, 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 work. Now, here's what I've heard in the past. As I'm interviewing a person, they will say, oh, my mother is sick or brother is sick or we lost our apartment and we need to rent a different house or there's some, oh, this is the bad thing in my life or the challenge. And then I just want to work so much because I need the money. And then once I hire the person, then all of a sudden, well, they only want to work certain hours. And, and beforehand they said, oh, I'm happy to work US hours or Filipino hours, whatever. Well, now all of a sudden that they've been hired, well, now they would like to work from eight to five, Monday to Friday. <laughs> and an entrepreneur wouldn't even dream of working eight to five, Monday to Friday. You don't get enough work done. So if you want to fit in, then maybe you say, I would like a day off each week, or can I ask that you not bother me during such and such hours or not contact me during those hours? Or better than that probably would be, hey, just so you know, I'm a big church person. And so on uh, during church hours, I'm not going to be available actually the whole day Sunday. And for you, that is 5 p.m. Saturday night until um, 5 p.m. Sunday night, whatever, you, whatever it is. That brings up another point. When you give this block of time, anytime you mention a time, mention it in the time that your client is in. Your client should never have to worry about doing the time calculations. You should do it all. Definitely never ask your client what time it is where they are. If you know the city they're in, you can look it up online. Now, if you want to make absolutely sure, you could say, okay, I understand that you're in Knoxville, Tennessee. Is it correct that it is 9 p.m. right now, if you want to be absolutely sure. But that is that is very important that you you solve problems on your own. Don't ask the the your client, the person who's hired you, don't ask them any question that you can figure out on your own. We, your clients, we are so busy working so hard that we have hired you to save time. And it takes time for us to respond to you. And any chance you get to relieve our workload, that's what we want. 
So those are some of the important things. And I'm going to add a couple more um, in just a little bit that are important. Another important thing is to under promise and over deliver. And what will frequently happen is a virtual assistant will say, I will have this task done in 24 hours. And then when the person who hired them comes back in 24 hours to look for the finished product, they instead see an excuse. I had to take my sister to the hospital. I had to take my mother to the hospital. My dad had his car break down and I had to go take care of that. There's some excuse for why in 24 hours they could not accomplish a particular task. An entrepreneur gets stuff done. And so they expect, or they don't expect, they want their employees to do the same. Whatever it takes, go without sleep, um, drink another cup of coffee, get your energy up and work, 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 work. Now, these things that I'm talking about, again, if you're not a hard worker, if you don't want to get ahead in life, if you don't want to make money and eventually be able to save up a lot of money and have what you want in life, then just disregard this. There are many Americans who do exactly the same thing. They think they can work 40 hours a week and just get by and everything will be okay. And it probably will. They can get welfare from the government. There are ways for them to get by. But if you want to appeal to the entrepreneur and you want to get ahead, don't ask for favors, don't make excuses, just work really hard, under-promising, over-delivering. There was recently a situation in which a person whom I work with had some incredible opportunities, and I was thinking of investing heavily in them and really taking good care of them, and I got several messages that completely soured me. I'll still, I'll still pay them. They're an employee. They'll do the task that I say as, as I ask them to, but it's not like I'm going to try to make them a partner in the business or say, Hey, are there any investments you can think of around your town that I could help you invest in? And we could be partners and you could make big money. There are all kinds of opportunities. Entrepreneurs want to make money. We are looking for opportunities all the time. And if you are not performing as an entrepreneur and you're acting like an employee, you're an employee mindset kind of person, you're not going to get these opportunities. We'll say, no, nope, can't think of anything. We'll just please go do that data entry or do that thing and we'll fix it. And you're, you're better than nothing. That's okay. And if that's all you want out of life, that's okay. But I suggest you reach down deep dig down deep, work really hard, under promise, over deliver, be punctual, get things done, don't make excuses, follow through with what you say. It's important. I hope this helps.